Hey everyone, first of all, a very warm good evening and uh, welcome to uh, this stream. Uh, today, our, today uh, focusing on AI and ML, we have brought, brought you an expert speaker. And without further, uh, without much delay, I'll bring him to the stage. Hey, Praveen. Hey, Karthi. Yeah. Hey, Praveen. First of all, uh, thanks for you know, uh, like uh, this is a very interesting topic. Personally, I also love cricket, so I'm sure the audience mm -hmm. would also find it interesting. So, uh, could you give a brief introduction about yourself and the topic that uh, you are going to present today? Yeah, surely I'll do that one once I start my session. So, am I good to start the session or do we need to wait? Yeah, please, uh, sure. Uh, share your screen. Wait, just confirm me once you see the slide. Deck. Yeah, it's here. <clears throat> you can see them? Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, thanks, Karthik, uh, uh, for organizing the, such a great meetup. And uh, uh, I know I appreciate the effort that is being put up behind the scenes. It's uh, not an easy task to manage those things. I really appreciate and <clears throat> thanks for that one. So uh, I also like to welcome and thanks the audience uh, to join today's session. It's a Friday evening, I know, but uh, hopefully you will get some interesting things out of this session and uh, you will be able to grasp those things and build something out of that one. So with that, I'll just start my session. So the topic for today is cricket analytics and prediction. And uh, it's using ML.NET framework. So this framework is from uh, Microsoft, so uh, which is pertaining to the machine learning part of uh, the ecosystem. So till now, the developers were struggling a lot. Uh, the .NET developers, they were uh, <clears throat> struggling a lot with respect to how to go and start working in the machine learning space. So Microsoft came up with this framework. And uh, with that, uh, they are trying to ease the uh, things for the .NET developers. Otherwise, uh, a .NET developer has to go and learn a different language such as Python or R and uh, they need to, which will take some time for them to grasp. Plus, uh, they will not be able to focus on the machine learning concepts and they will be mean, uh, struggling with the syntax and other intricacies of the language that is present in other ecosystem. Uh, so it's a new framework, not a new, but uh, it's around like two years old framework, which is developed by um, Microsoft. And it's been there uh, for like around like 10 to 15 years. So Microsoft has been using it internally for the past uh, 10 to 15 years. Uh, and it's being used uh, in different uh, applications from Microsoft, such as uh, Microsoft Bing. Uh, PowerPoint or uh, Word. So there are various use cases that they have used, but now for the past two years, they have just open sourced this thing to the community and to develop uh, applications using this one. So this is about the ML.NET. Uh, with that, I'll <clears throat> start. Okay. So this is the agenda for today's talk. So I'll be briefly talking about the cricket. I know uh, in India, uh, most of the people know about cricket, but uh, just to uh, give a brief overview of what cricket is and how it is being structured uh, for the audience who have a very limited knowledge on the cricket sports, then uh, I'll give you a brief overview on that one. Then I'll move on to the data set part, like uh, from where I got the data set. Third one is data cleaning and analysis. So uh, what the data that we get, it's not always clean. Clean, I say, it may contain some uh, duplicates. It may contain some null values. 
uh, all those kind of things uh, we will be doing as part of the data cleaning and analysis. After that, uh, <clears throat> some analysis using ML.NET framework and a prediction. So this is uh, mainly the machine learning prediction that we are going to do. So it will be done on a data set for uh, six hours only. And it will be done for a ball within those six hours. For example, if you want to predict a score at 3.3 hours uh, and fourth ball, then you can just mention that one and it will give you a prediction all of that one. OK. A brief introduction about myself. So I'm working as a cloud architect at Harman. It's a Samsung company. Domain I work for is a professional audio, video, and control. Area of expertise is uh, cloud and distributed computing. And my area of interest is AIML, cloud, and IoT. And I'm based out of Bangalore, India. And also, I'm a Azure certified. And recently, I did my data science uh, certification as well. So yeah. And I'm a member of .NET Foundation as well. <clears throat> so <clears throat> just one thing. Uh, on the left bottom, you could see a link over here. So I have put it on every side slide. So this will take you to the GitHub page where you have all the resources available. So just in case you want to make a note of that one, it's available on every slide. OK, let's jump into the cricket. So <clears throat> this is a history about uh, a cricket my sports. It was invented in 1550 and originated by England. So the uh, first international match was played between Canada and USA in New York. So I was also a bit surprised, uh, like <clears throat> the match was very much famous in the England and other places, but uh, I got to know, okay, it's the first match was played between Canada and USA for which we still have the teams, but they are not very good, you know, I would say. And the first ODI was played in 1971. And the first cricket World Cup was in 1975 and recently we started with like t20 matches and it was played first match was played in 2003 i believe it's quite a long time now but uh, <clears throat> that it is like growing like anything uh, with respect to the viewership with respect to the audience uh, with respect to the craze that is going on and the formats uh, which is prominent in a cricket match is a one day international, which is a limited over match of 50 hours. Second one is a test match, which is spans across uh, five days. Then T20 matches, which is uh, just a 20 over match. And then counties are played within, in England uh, between different, different uh, uh, counties available in England. Then the last but not the least, and it's the most important nowadays, is the IPL. So that is the Indian Premier League, which has a format of 20 overs, and it's like a nerve-wracking uh, match, which goes where is a lot of teams, uh, a mix of players from a, a different continents or from different countries come and play and give their best. And this is just a statistics. Uh, uh, for example, this is from uh, 2019 and 2020 data. So that time uh, the IPL was played by uh, 104 nations, not the IPL, but the total nations that were participated were 104. And the IPL value is, and if you see, it's like $6.7 billion. So that itself shows uh, how uh, important is this game and how much value it is generating out of that one. And the viewers say, if you see like 370 million, so which includes a lot of things. So if you have a huge uh, uh, viewership means uh, you get to generate more revenue out of that one. And with respect to that, uh, you can say this, uh, uh, the data scientists, that the amount of data that gets generated out of this viewership and the, the 2020 format match, it's humongous so we the there is a uh, it has to be analyzed and uh, evaluated to make some predictions out of that one so with that humongous data nowadays a lot of uh, 
teams are uh, collaborating with the companies to generate the insights out of the humongous data and uh, uh, to give a meaningful predictions out of that one so that it can help the team to overcome those things uh, in the next match or maybe in the future match okay so before i go into the problem statement uh, i just wanted to know and maybe you can put it down in the chat uh, the answers for that so oh, oh, like today's match is between which two teams i just wanted to have that one maybe you can put it in the chat and we'll see and uh, so i'll keep asking some questions in between maybe it's good if you can answer those things in the chat so the problem statement for today is performing analysis on the cricket data set and uh, predicting the score on a specific ball till six over and the tools and framework that i have used for today's demo is uh, obviously it's a .NET framework with a, a c sharp language and uh, and the framework for machine learning is ml.net that is being used whereas uh, i'll be running it on a jupyter notebook which is uh, an interactive uh, way of uh, executing your code to so have a, everything within one place like you can combine the code as well as the images and other parts so it becomes really easy to navigate through that one instead of navigating through the slides and uh, <clears throat> the azure function where you can host this application and make a prediction so this is like the hosting provider and dotnet interactive which is a kernel that is, which provides a way to execute your uh, things within a Jupyter Notebook. So by default, Jupyter Notebook comes with Python kernel, but uh, dot, if you install the .NET Interactive, then you can execute your c -sharp code as well within that Jupyter Notebook. And there is a special uh, library, uh, Danny. So uh, I'll be using it for data analysis. And I find it very useful compared to the default one, which is provided by Microsoft. And uh, like uh, loading that, csv file into a data frame so it can be achieved using microsoft library microsoft data frame but uh, there are some limitations to that one and i'll brief you on that as well and uh, yeah and the last but not the least the azure web app so this is for hosting your web application i have uh, created a very small application just to demonstrate this thing so that is being hosted on the azure web app okay so this is the data set uh, and the source is uh, in clickseat.org and uh, it's like a t20 matches of the man's only and this is a metadata about the data set you can say it's a it has a data from 2017 to 2021 which includes uh, 1010 matches 1010 matches and the teams that participated were like 56 and the data set has a uh, 22 columns and around 231k records in it and the data set contains a mix of numbers and string so if you look here like these are the 22 columns you have match id season start date venue inning ball batting team bowling team so like that you have 22 so for our problem statement i'm not going to use all of them because uh, you can say that some of them are not relevant for the problem statement that we are solving but some are being relevant so for example other wicket type i don't need that other player dismissed i don't need for making a prediction uh, for a ball uh, how many runs have been scored so I i'll remove all those uh, extra columns but this is the standard data uh, columns that are present in the data set okay now my uh, next question is like who will be the winner for today's match you can put it in the chat just put a uh, random guess there okay so now this is uh, coming to the data cleaning part uh, on a wherein uh, 
I'm going to filter the data set. So as I told, like it has 22 columns and all are not relevant to our problem statement. So I'm going to remove uh, the columns, which is not required, uh, which I feel is not required. There are different ways of uh, feature engineering, uh, like uh, cross uh, uh, cross validation, not not the cross validation, but yeah, confusion metrics is one of them. So there are different ways, but I'm not going to go into the details of those one. But a simpler one based on my understanding about the match of cricket. Uh, I would le be leveraging only these six uh, parameters or the features. For example, you have venue, where it is played, innings, whether it is a first inning or a second inning, ball, batting team, bowling team, striker, non-striker, and baller. That's all I'm going to use. Now, some of the things that I'll be doing, performing is like filtering the data set to include record till six over. As we saw, uh, there are... Uh, records uh, uh, so we saw that there are like 231k uh, records but uh, i just want it till six over and uh, the the reason i chose that one for today's problem statement is because just to have a low memory and fast execution otherwise it's going to take a lot of time and i'll not be able to demo but definitely you are you can go ahead and train it on the full data set that is available from Crickseed. Then checking for the null values, so we'll be removing the null values from the data set. Aggregation, so for example, if uh, there's no column that tells you, okay, for this ball, how much was the score at that point of time? So we will be aggregating a data from runs of bat, uh, runs scored on that ball, plus uh, the extras that were given. So this thing will give me the score per ball. So this is an aggregation that we will be performing on our data frame. Then cumulative sum means uh, how many runs are there at a particular ball, the total number of runs. So for that also, we don't have a column uh, which, or a feature which tells us, okay, this many runs have been scored after six overs or after three overs, the total number of runs. And so for that, we will be performing some cumulative sum and generating that uh, data from the data frame that we received through this CSV file. Then removing the features and columns, as I told you, like there are 22 columns, but we will be leveraging only the six of them. Okay. Okay, my next question is, which is your favorite team? Maybe you can put it in the chat. Okay, yeah, now coming to the prediction part. Uh, so till the last slide we saw how we are going to perform the analysis. And uh, so we got our data, we uh, made some changes in that data as per our requirement. We removed unnecessary uh, things from that one. Now our data is ready to be to make a prediction. So for making a prediction, so basically it is a continuous value that we are going to predict. So that is a total score and it's not a classification thing wherein you are predicting something out of some uh, categories. So it's a continuous uh, value that we are going to predict and uh, which based on that, we can say it's a regression problem only. And so we will be making a prediction using uh, ML.net for that. So these are the steps that are uh, that we need to follow to make a prediction. So first we will map the the columns that are present as a feature and create some classes out of that one. So such as like match, match will hold uh, information about these uh, features. That score prediction is nothing but it's being mapped to the total score, uh, area of total score. So defining the classes, then we will be loading the full data set. So we will be loading it from the CSV file. And uh, after that, we will be splitting the data set. Uh, so we will be splitting it in a standard 80-20 uh, rule, using the standard 80-20 rule, wherein 80% will be your trained data set, then 20% is your test data set. And uh, then we will be performing some one hot encoding. 
and this is mainly required because machine learning only understand uh, zero and ones or the numbers only so some of the column values are uh, in uh, string for example venue then batting team bowling team striker non-striker baller so all these are in uh, non numerical values so we need to convert that into some numerical value so for that uh, there is a way we call it as a one, one hot encoding it will convert those values into a numerical value so we will be leveraging our api from the ml.net to perform this one then the algorithm uh, which is being used to make the prediction is the fast tree uh, that is provided by ml.net and fast tree it works on the concept of binary trees where it, it uh, tries to uh, divide and conquer the problem statement into two uh, areas and uh, and try to make a prediction out of them so this makes it very fast is compared to other algorithms that are present but uh, it all depends on the, your data set and the um, your computation that is going to have. So for today's problem statement and with the limited data set that I have, I feel that the first tree is a good one for that one. And next one is like, uh, we once this is done, then we will train the data set on the uh, data set that we gathered <coughs> or cleaned up. We'll make an evaluation based using the test data set and finally we will be making a prediction on a unseen data set or unseen uh, score match information this is just a preview about that one so there are three ways two, two to three ways that i have used for this problem statement uh, for example you have a api way so wherein uh, I'm using the Jupyter notebook and these are the different metrics uh, that is being used for a regression problem. So for example, you have an R squared scores, which is coming 0.82, which is quite good. And this is the information that is being predicted for a unknown uh, data, unknown match. So for example, I selected venue as this one, betting India, bowling team, New Zealand, inning one, three points. So I want to understand get okay how much uh, score will be there after 3.4 overs uh, so the predicted score is 24 whereas the actual score was uh, 20 in this case so with that uh, i can say it's very much close to the actual score and uh, uh, the algorithm has performed quite well for this problem and there is other way uh, so if you are using ml.net, uh, you can code the things and get your uh, prediction done. But there is something called as a model builder, wherein you can just supply the uh, data set to it and it will make a prediction out of that one. And it will also run it uh, on a different algorithms internally. So we are not uh, sure what algorithm it is going to use, but it will run on multiple using multiple algorithms and this is the report that it got generated and uh, based on the best one at the top and the maybe the, uh, the one at the bottom is not the very good one compared to the best on the top so this has uh, trained it using three algorithms like light gbm then sdc and then fast tree and these are the values based on them so you are free to use uh, this utility uh, wherein you don't want to go into the integrations, okay, which is the best uh, algorithm. And uh, if you have a very simple problem statement, it's very. This is a very convenient tool to use and uh, apply this one in your problem machine learning problem. Okay, and this is the web app that I have developed, uh, wherein you are going to select a venue, inning, over a ball, a batting team, striker, non-striker, bowling team, baller. So based on this, we just make a prediction. So for example, this is three, 5.2 overs. <clears throat> the score was like 15. So this is uh, uh, hosted on the Azure web app and the backend, the, the machine learning algorithm is running in Azure function. 
Okay, with that I will move on to the demo. So my next next question is how many of you play cricket? Actually play cricket. Okay. So I'll be doing it from scratch. Instead of using Visual Studio, I'll be using the Jupyter Notebook. So if you look at here, I just have a, a notebook file and these are assets, assets is like nothing but the images that is being used within the notebook file, nothing more. So I have a very clean place to start with, with no data set, nothing. So there are two ways you can do it, either using Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. I'll use the Jupyter Lab. Looks like no one plays the cricket. I don't see any answers. Okay, yeah. So this is our interface for Jupyter Lab, uh, where we can execute code as well as we can uh, document, have the documentation together. And if you look at here on the right top, uh, you can select multiple uh, kernels available within your system. So I have .NET C Sharp installed. Otherwise, the default one is the Python that is uh, used. So it will allow me to execute the C Sharp code within this uh, notebook. OK. And if you can see here, we don't have anything as of now. And I start executing. The way to execute is this. Either you can use this button, keep moving. So this is nothing but whatever I have already explained, it's the same thing. And this is the place from where I got my data set. So maybe I can quickly open that and so oh. yeah, so this is the play website from where I just took the data set. It has a lot of data set based on the different matches like T20 or One Day International like that. If you want to make a analysis on any other kind of a format, you can just go and download and start working on that. So this is about the data set. And exploratory data analysis is like we have 22 features and 194K records. Features have a mix of date, number, and string. So we need to use the one hot end, uh, encoding to change them into a number, into numeral values. Then it also contains some uh, null values. Okay, so we will, this is the data that I got uh, from the quick sheet. And this is just a command to validate what is the version of .NET interactive uh, you are using. Okay, so for example, I'm using this is the version number. Just in case if you encounter any issue, you can report an issue with this version number. And it will also tell you whether this .NET Interactive is installed on your system or not. Now, this is how we define the NuGet packages. So in general, if you use a... Let me reset it just to show that 
we are doing everything from scratch. So if you see this symbol, that means it is processing. Once it is done, this will... Okay, let me try it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, how we add the NuGet packages in .NET inter using .NET Interactive. And this is the syntax for that. Like, I'll be leveraging Microsoft.ml, which is your ML.NET uh, framework uh, namespace. Then this is for fast tree algorithm, and this is for uh, your data analysis. Is for your data frame, like loading the data or a CSV file into a data frame. So it's very much similar to what we have in Python as well, or other libraries. Uh, so the concept is very much similar to that only. So we'll perform some uh, data analysis using that. Then data, this is the library I was talking, dandy.data from. It provides a lot of features compared to one that is provided by Microsoft. And CSV helper is for transforming something within my CSV file that is present. So I'll review what transformations I have done. So once you have this, it will install the packages. And if you want to specify a particular version, you can just put a comma and specify the version number just in case. Otherwise, it will take the latest one. OK. So you could see the message like installed packages. So all the packages have been ready to use. And these are the namespaces where I'm just saying, OK, what are uh, namespaces I am going to use? So this is for CSV helper. This is for Danny. This is for making the prediction, these two. And this is for analysis. That means the data frame. And this is for formatting the content that we get uh, out of the data frame. It, it's not uh, in a very good way that it is we are getting. So we need to format it into a table. So we leverage this one for formatting into a table. So these 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 three are mainly used for that. Only. Then HTTP is for downloading the data from internet. So we will be providing a URL of Crick Sheet. So it will automatically download everything from there. Then this is for uh, saving the file into the system and this is globalization okay so and now comes this the constant so i have defined some constant for example the data set url so this is the place from where we will get the data set and uh, then the directory the file the file that gets downloaded this name means uh, the data set that we get uh, from Crickseed, it contains a lot of files in it, and uh, which is very difficult to process. So now I have a utility function that takes all those files and merge into a single file so that we can process, we can load it into a data frame, or we can use it for making the prediction instead of uh, processing files one by one. And this is from where we have uh, removed all the things, such as it is limited to six hours data, plus uh, it contains no null values. It contains uh, uh, not the unwanted columns. So all those things are stored in this file, clean CSV. Then this is the model file. That means once uh, we have trained the model, we wanted to save and use it in different applications, such as console or uh, desktop application or a web app so so this is the file that is being used in my azure function to make the prediction and this is just a search pattern like based on the c folder should contains many files so we are only bothered about the csv files in there and this is for like data frame like top count i just wanted to display only the top five then to default row count like that and these are the name of the columns uh, Okay, so we have ball, score, run up at all those things. So we will be considering only these instead of considering all 22. Then over threshold I have defined here is six. You can go and make a chain like seven, 10, whatever you feel like. So I am just considering only the six overs. 
This is a utility function for merging multiple CSV files present in a specified directory. So you specify a source folder and what it will do, it will based on the search pattern. So we just want uh, to merge all the CSV files present in a directory. So it will do that one. Plus there is a predicate uh, that allows you to exclude any of the files within that. Uh, so it will find all the files and it will read the lines and it will merge it into a destination file. So once uh, it is done, you will get only one single file out of this. And I could see there is something called as an info.csv files, so which are not of importance to us. So I'm just excluding it. And this is being used, utilized as a predicate in the above function. So it will exclude uh, any file that ends with info.csv. Then you have the, okay, okay, let me run this. So as you see here, as soon as I am executing, a number is getting generated over here. So this one is for formatting the data frame into a table. This is okay. So now we are going to load the data set. So what it will do first, it will clean up any previous data set that is present in this directory. If no data set is present, then it will download the zip file from the Cricksheet website and it will generate a single file out of that one. Whereas in Cricks, the data set that we downloaded from uh, Cricksheet will have multiple CSV files. And so all those things we are doing inside a single method. So it will clean, so nothing is there, so it won't do anything. And this is the load data async. So first it will, what it will do, it will clean the previous data set. And uh, this is where we are downloading that file from the uh, quick sheet. It will write it into a file, which is a zip file. Now, once the zip file is there, it will extract uh, that file and it will merge all the files that are present in that one, the CSV files into a single one. So this is a utility function for that. So now if I do that, and, and it will give me a cricket data set frame. So you could see here the file got generated and still the cell is executing. So the star symbol represent that it is still executed, it's not completed. And from that uh, zip file, uh, our utility function, what it did is it took all the files within that zip file and merged it into a single file. So I can show you that. So now you can see earlier we had a Python notebook file plus assets folder only. And we could see a merged file. Oops. That's a big file for that. Maybe not. So this is the zip file. which we, the code downloaded it from Cricksheet. And if you could see, there are a lot of files present and we, each one represents information about a particular match up for a particular day. So what uh, that utility function did is, it merged the content of these all files into a single file. And it has ignored anything which is like info.csv. This is what I have done. Okay. So now our data set has been downloaded. We'll see. So very first thing that we are doing is uh, we are uh, considering only uh, rows till uh, six overs. Beyond that, we are not considering. So this is a way to put that condition. So within your uh, data frame, you see the column ball. So ball will be there, like one, two, three, like that. And if it is beyond 5.9, element wise less than or equal to. So we defined it as 6.0. So anything which satisfies this condition will be taken care. And this is the condition. Now in data frame, uh, there's something called as a filter where we can define the condition. So this is the condition we are defining and we are passing it to our data from frame filter function. So it will filter out anything that is matching with this uh, condition. So we will get only 
data set for six hours and to visualize uh, that one example this one and so we have so these are the top five records present and it has multiple various columns present for example match id session start date venue inning like that so there are 22 columns that are present and we are not considering all of them we also how to filter it out again and so give me a idea okay how many records are there for every column so it's a very clean data set i would say so it has uh, one uh, 100k around records present and so you could see this is about the description like uh, what is the maximum value what is the minimum what is the mean value out of for every column present in the data set so if you could see that this is a good point like uh, we only considered uh, the data set for six hours whereas our original data set had data till 20 hours so the minimum ball is 0.1 whereas the maximum is 5.9 so this data set has uh, filtered out anything beyond six hours now this is for calculating the score and total score where we are aggregating the things that is already present in our data frame so these two parameters are not features are not present but we need it for our uh, analysis and for our prediction so we are doing those things so using uh, we are trying to add extra column for these things so for example the score is nothing but a runs of bet plus extra total score is like a cumulative sum of score per inning and the way it can be done is like within the current existing uh, data frame we can add a column and there are So this is the way you add a column to your data frame. Once the uh, items have been added, once the column has been added, then you have to fill that value using a, by adding runs of bet and extra, which is being done here. For example, you have column, which is runs of bet, and uh, we are adding the column extra. So a sum of these two will be put up in the column values of uh, a score so if you see here we don't have a score anywhere here till the end not here sorry yeah till here we don't have a if you see the info now we could see a score column that has been added and and you can see the values coming up now for a score okay so for like the first ball it is zero second ball it is zero third ball it is one run fourth ball you can say two runs got then after that some ball it was three runs and like that now uh, this is a utility function to calculate the total score per ball so wherein we are passing the data frame and calculating so same way we are adding a column for total runs and uh, we are adding up and generating the values for the uh, total score now this is for your now we could see per ball what was the score like 0 0 then 1 then 1 plus 2 3 like 3 plus 0 is 3 then 3 plus 3 is 6 so per ball now it is calculating the score and this is what we wanted and uh, as part of our prediction now feature selection so there are like i think this is uh, wrong here it was 22 columns in the data set but uh, we are considering only six of them so we need to get rid of uh, other columns in our data set so this is the way to remove the column. You just have columns dot remove and specify the name of the column. So if I run this one, it will remove the columns. And now we have a clean data set. 
Okay, so we have only these columns present now. And The prediction API uses CSV data only, and there is no way to convert a, a Microsoft data frame into a CSV. So it's not supported as of now. So what now there is a problem like you can't change it from C, data frame to CSV, which is read by the prediction part. So what you I discovered is there is a Danny library which does that thing very easily. So it takes the CSV file content, the data set that you have perform the operation that is we did, whichever we did in the quick seed data set, like reducing it to six over, removing the null values and uh, removing the columns, all those things. It also does, but there's a benefit here that it allows you to save it into CSV also, the converted data frame or the formatted data frame, transformed data frame. So I have used this library for that purpose only. And it is also doing the same thing, like taking record till six over, removing missing values, adding score and total score, everything that. But the extra thing that it is doing is, it is going to save that file into a CSV file. And there is a utility function that is, I have written for create some of the values in the uh, data set that we got from Crickseed. So for example, the column venue or the feature venue, uh, it contains some comma in it. And when we try to load that into our ML.net, it consider it to be a different uh, value of a column. So what this function, utility function will do, it will replace that comma within a column with an underscore just to avoid any issues while reading the file uh, as a CSV. So this one does that. So I will not go, it is doing the same thing. Like we are loading the data set, we are removing the missing values and printing data set for still six hours. So like it is generating the value, uh, CSV file. Yeah. So more or less the same thing. Keep all those things. Okay. Again, we have the same data set, uh, but it's a very cleaned one now. And it's, a, it's in a CSV format, it's not in a uh, data frame format, which can be easily consumed within your ML.NET API for making the prediction. Now, coming to the training part, uh, as I already told, that we need to define some data structure that can map to the features present in our data set or in the CSV file. For example, this is a match class, which is being mapped to the different features like venue, any ball. And uh, so whereas venue is a string, inning is a float. So just to keep in mind, like uh, ML.NET supports float only as of now, not the integer ones. So you have to make uh, anything that is a uh, numeric, it has to be float data type. Then betting team, bowling team is try
So my data set is going to follow the same structure what we defined with all the columns, uh, filtered out columns only. It has a header as true, that means it the file contains a, a header as well. And the separator character, sometimes it is, it is tab separated, sometimes it is comma. So we are specifying our file contains content in as comma separated values. Then we are going to split the data set. And this is the API for that one, wherein we specify the data, okay, whatever the data we loaded and uh, what should be the ratio it has to be done. So for example, training and test, uh, we are specifying 80, 20. For that, we need to specify the uh, 0.2 here. <coughs> so with that, I'll first load the data set. So now the data set has been loaded. Data set has been split. Now this one is uh, the main pipeline wherein we are performing some operations so, or the transformations. So what we are going to do, we are going to specify, uh, copy the columns. So in this, we have a uh, output score is a total score that we have to specify. And we say, okay, this is the label for the item. So basically we define, okay, what should be the label or how it is being mapped to this system. So the label will be mapped to the total score. Then these are the different uh, one hot encoding. I told like anything related to string, we have to convert it into a numerical value. So this one will take care of those things. And we just say, okay, what is the, so for example, we have innings, balls, these are numerical values, whereas batting team, bowling team, striker, these are not, uh, these are non-numerical things. So we just specify a different uh, name to those columns such as encoded because these uh, are not uh, very much same what we have for the defined data structure. So here we just concatenate and create a new column called as a uh, features, which is a combination of all the features present in our system for our problem statement. So that, uh, Okay, so with that, everything has been uh, transformed and ready to be trained. So, yeah, so this is a, another thing like where we specify, we haven't specified the training algorithm. So here we are specifying the fast tree as a training algorithm to it. And we are specifying, okay, what is the input, uh, what is the output and what are the inputs to that. And fit method is uh, your main thing which allows you to train your model. And here we specify the training data set for training the model. So once it is done, now it is uh, training our model. And once we it is over, we will get the trained model out of the training data set. So it's going to take some time. Yeah, it's done. Now with that, uh, our model has been trained. Okay, so now we'll see, evaluate it on the test data set. So this is your test data set, which we got through a T20 split. And this is for regression, evaluate is there, then you need to provide the prediction and it will give you the matrix for that one. You can see like the R square is 0 0.8, which is quite good. Then 6.95 is also good. So these two metrics are of significant uh, importance in case of a regression problem statement. So we see that the model has performed quite well. It's good to be consumed within our application, whether it is an Azure function or a console app or a WPF app anyway. So we'll save that model to our local directory so it has been saved as model.zip so you can see here it's got generated here and it is around like 390 bytes so that's a very small uh, size which can be easily deployed on as your function so this has been saved now we want to validate it with some of our own data so here i am specifying my own data and trying to find the uh, prediction out of it so actual score, I have mentioned it as 20 and the predicted, we will see how much it is. So I'm assuming for this data, this is a score. 
So you see that 24 is the coming and the actual one was 20. So with that uh, and the value that I got this is from the Quicksit uh, data set only. I took one record from that one, which was not used for training and testing. And I used that data set, uh, that data for performing, performing my prediction. So this one uh, is doing very well here and uh, looks to be good to be consumed. Okay. <clears throat> Same thing, uh, I can go to maybe So this is the website where I have deployed it and uh, click it prediction. So we'll select uh, some of the things in it randomly. So it is like inning two, select over four, wall two, fourth ball, fourth over, second ball, Kolkata Knight Riders, striker, Hussey. Then Tony, then Kings 11, and Baller you can have Fleming. So now I'll just click on this. So what it will do, it will make a call to my Azure function, which is deployed on Azure. And this web app is also deployed on uh, Azure in the Azure web app. So this gives me a value of 11.85, which is uh, at the end of 4.2 hours, it is giving me. And we can play around with, uh, with other values as well. So yeah. So that's all. And uh, yeah, one last thing before I conclude. So the if you want to use the uh, Visual Studio version of it, uh, there's a Visual Studio version as well, where we are making the same thing like loading the data set. So I'm not doing any analysis, but a prediction part is available in this. So for example, same thing, ML context, creating ML context, splitting the data set, then transforming the data using different uh, strategies, then defining the algorithm and training um, it on a test train data set, evaluating, and saving prediction. Everything is present here as well. So we can run this as well. And the simplest and the easy way is, I would say, is using the ML.NET Builder. So, yeah, machine learning model. Okay, so <clears throat> our problem was a regression problem. So we'll use this local CPU. We'll give it a file. It's pretty convenient here. It is loading it. Yeah. So it has cleaned it and it gives you a preview about what is present in that data set, like what are the columns present, some rows out of that one. 
and we want to predict the select the column to predict so in our case it should be total score so we'll select that and go to the next step time to train maybe like 10 seconds i just want to show you quickly so nowadays training and create calculating the accuracies or the different matrices it has Looks like there's some issue in this. Yeah, so this time it has calculated. It took this much of time. And the good part is like it generates the code as well for you. Uh, hey, Praveen. Yeah. Uh, Praveen, I think we are running a little short of time. Yeah, just give me five minutes and I'll wrap it up. I'm just okay. done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So here you can see it has trained and it has generated a model and it has taken some random value and it will make. Maybe three runs, yeah. And the good part is like uh, it gives you a snippet as well how it has to be consumed within your application, a console app, a web app. So maybe you can add those things and it will give you the code as well for that. So everything you will get uh, through this only. Yeah. So this is how you can leverage this uh, tool to make the predictions if you are not much familiar with the dot, no, machine learning part of it. Yeah, so with that, uh, I'll just brief you on the resources that are present. Okay, so this is the page uh, where you get all the resources for today's talk. Uh, you have GitHub link, you have deck, then notebook, which I showed you, then source code. And there is another uh, article that I had written, a uh, descriptive one, which includes each and everything that I have explained today, uh, all the steps present here. And last but not the, then it has the results part as well, where I have specified how the results are coming using a different type. And there is a Telegram group that I've been running, so it's available on this page as well. And if you are interested, feel free to join that as well. Okay, so with that, uh, and yeah, so last thing is uh, uh, improvements. So if you have a large data set, definitely you are going to get a better accuracy or better uh, estimations, uh, prediction for this uh, problem statement. Then feature selection strategies, as I talked about, uh, you can use the different strategies. I just used based on my understanding about the cricket and different algorithms you can try out. And yeah, so this is all, these are the resources like getting started with ML.net and slides are available here. And this is the short URL for this only direct one. And it's available here. Yeah, uh, that's all from my side. Uh, feel free to ask any question you have, uh, either put it in the chat or connect me over uh, Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll be happy to ask answer that thanks for your time over to you karthik yeah hey praveen thank you for such a wonderful session so if you guys have any questions do reach out to him his social links are in the description of the youtube video and you can also find on the meetup so uh do reach out to praveen thanks praveen thank you and have a good evening everyone bye bye yeah. bye so uh this was it so we'll see you in the next community uh, session. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, guys.